Not all dementia is Alzheimer's, and one of the most misdiagnosed and misunderstood forms is Lewy body dementia. It affects millions, and it's frequently missed. And when it's missed, the treatment can actually make the symptoms worse. So let's talk about it. This month is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, and I want to highlight Lewy body dementia specifically because families are often left in the dark about what's happening, even when the symptoms are happening right in front of them. And often, it can be misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's, so it's important to understand the differences. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 68-year-old man who began with mild memory lapses, but over time, he began to develop vivid, calm, visual hallucinations, fluctuations in his attention and awareness, and then into some Parkinson-like motor changes, including shuffling gait and facial stiffness. Some days he was clear and engaged, while other days he appeared cognitively slowed, with these shifts often happening within hours of each other. He has something called Lewy body dementia. So what is Lewy body dementia? It is a neurodegenerative disorder that's caused by abnormal protein deposits in the brain called Lewy bodies. These proteins are made of something called alpha-synuclein, which is the same protein that's involved in Parkinson's disease. And this is exactly why Lewy body dementia tends to look like a blend of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's because the neurological symptoms don't fit neatly into one box. And that's exactly why the diagnosis gets missed. Lewy body dementia is the second most common form of degenerative dementia after Alzheimer's. We estimate that 1.4 million people in the United States are living with it, but many experts believe that the real number is actually much higher than that because the diagnosis is so inconsistent. It typically begins in adults over the age of 50, and we do see a slightly higher rate in men, but it's not a normal part of aging. This is a disease. This is where Lewy body dementia stands out. The pattern is very important. The core symptoms include fluctuating cognition and alertness. Families often describe it as like good days and bad days. Someone could look really sharp and aware in the morning, but by dinner time they can be disoriented. And that fluctuation is a signature clue. Visual hallucinations, especially early, are often a symptom. And these aren't small hallucinations, these are clear, formed images like people, children, or animals, and they're often non-threatening at first, but they are very real to the patient. The Parkinsonian type symptoms are shuffling gait, rigidity or stiffness, slowness of their movement, a stooped posture, and these resemble Parkinson's because both diseases involve the same abnormal protein in the brain. You can also have a REM sleep disorder, and this means that people literally act out their dreams. They kick, yell, and talk in their sleep. And here's a major clinical pearl. They may have a sensitivity to antipsychotic medication. So if a patient with unrecognized Lewy body dementia is given certain antipsychotic medications, this could actually worsen their symptoms dramatically. And this is one of the main reasons why making the correct diagnosis matters so much. How do we distinguish between Lewy body dementia from other forms of dementia? So if we compare it to Alzheimer's disease, Alzheimer's primarily affects your memory first. Lewy body affects attention, alertness, and movement early. If you compare it to Parkinson's disease, in Parkinson's disease, movement issues come first and then the cognition declines, where in Lewy body, the cognitive symptoms occur early, often alongside these hallucinations and sleep changes. And lastly, if you compare it to something like vascular dementia, vascular dementia is a type of dementia that follows strokes and it has more of a stepwise decline, whereas Lewy body fluctuates where you can have good days and bad days. So how do we make the diagnosis? The diagnosis is based on clinical pattern recognition that's supported by testing. Now we may use MRI to rule out strokes or other structural brain changes. We may often use a DAT scan that assesses the dopamine activity in the brain pathways that are associated with movement and neuropsychological testing to evaluate cognitive domains. Sleep studies can help confirm the REM sleep behavior disorder, but honestly, one of the biggest clues is the family's story. What they notice day to day is more telling than any test that we can order. So doctor, how do we treat it? 
There is no cure, but the treatment really focuses on managing the symptoms and preserving the quality of life. We use cholinesterase inhibitors to support the cognition. We use Parkinson's medications for stiffness and mobility melatonin or specialized sleep therapy for the REM sleep disorder, and especially physical therapy and occupational therapy to make sure that their mobility is safe. And more critically, we avoid traditional antipsychotics whenever possible because of that hypersensitivity risk that I spoke about. Now, I want you to understand that this is a disease that not only affects the patient, it affects their entire family and care system. Support groups, consistent routines, Education and compassionate communication go a long way. This is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, so I want to make sure that we talk about all types of dementia that can be confused with Alzheimer's. So if you've ever noticed fluctuating confusion, visual hallucinations, Parkinson-like movement changes in someone that you love, please bring it up. Early recognition can change the quality of life and safety. So share this video to help spread the awareness because the more we understand these diseases, the better that we can support the people that live with them. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.